Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 7, Episode 4. Today we're talking about Fatal Termination from 1990, directed by Yang Wa Kam. And we're going to be talking about one of the most dangerous stunts possibly ever put to film. I'm Joel Lascola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to The Dumpster. It's March, baby. You know what that means. And do I? I think so. Uh, leprechauns, uh, yeah. shamrocks, four-leaf yep. clovers, basically the same thing, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But also highlighting... Women Empowerment Month yes, also. That was kind of doing a bit there. I guess it wasn't oh. a very good bit, but it was a bit... <laughs> well, it's we'll, both. We'll get it's to, two we'll, things. Yeah, we'll get the St. Patty's Day shortly, Again, but you're two, right. two halves of the same coin. And yeah, we, like yeah. to, we like to do that every year. Last year, uh, Jenna Fryer joined us for Thriller, A Cruel Picture. Talk about a woman empowerment movie. Uh, what a revenge film. It's a very it's very much a, a, a big uh, rape revenge movie. Yep. Uh, one of the most infamous ones uh, to ever come out. And on that episode, we discussed some stuff like Pinky Violence stuff um, that we might have wanted to tackle and stuff like that. Um, Jenna was supposed to join us on this episode, but our schedules just could not line up uh, correctly, unfortunately, this year. She'll definitely be on next year. <laughs> Right, or I might be able to get her in on something else. There's ideas yeah. in, in DMs out there, but uh, yeah, for <laughs> now, uh, you'll have to wait for Jen's return. Uh, but we're still talking about Fatal Termination regardless. Yeah, absolutely. And we picked Fatal Termination because it has one Moon Lee in it, which yes. we're highlighting. Uh, we're going to highlight her uh, this month. Um, but it's not necessarily a revenge film or a centric film around Moon Lee. No. I mean, it is, but it's not. It is, but it's not. And uh, I have a little bit of a bone to pick with the way that this movie's marketed, and maybe this is just uh, me looking things up online, and maybe the marketing when this came out were actually uh, very different, but I yeah. feel like they heavily feature Moon Lee in this, and she is good in this, yeah. uh, but she is basically only in like 10% of this movie, and I think that's kind of shitty. Uh, what she does in this film is still awesome, and we're going to talk about it. Don't get me wrong, but I was I was expecting a lot more of Moon Lee. We it, did get a lot of Robin Shu in exchange, which we're gonna get to, which I'll kind of take. But I love Moon Lee uh, in the stuff I've seen her in, in the past, so that was a little disappointing right out the gate. I'll just say that. Yeah, this is no fighting madam or angel enforcer or anything like that, but she is in it, and I did want to tackle it because this fucking movie's insane. Oh, it is insane. And she's a part of it. And it's also been put out by our friends over at Error 44444. Right. 44444. Four, four, yeah. <laughs> Get that right, God yes. damn it. <laughs> Kieran's uh, got five E's. They've got four uh, <laughs> fours. Yeah, yeah, there you go. go. Uh, I don't know if they did that on purpose because I know in Japan, four is known as an unlucky number. It has to be because they mostly do Asian films, right? Uh, yeah, they do a lot of restorations of just like uh, basically cult Asian cinema. Which is pretty fucking amazing. They've been doing some really great stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about them in a little bit. Sure, sure. But if you want some more Movie Dumpster content, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster. You can get an ad-free audio version of the show for as little as $2 a month. And if you sign up for the 5 or $10 tiers, you get stuff like commentary tracks, live watch-alongs with us. You can be hanging out with us and chatting in the chat um, and all kinds of other good stuff. And you can support your favorite show. And for nothing at all, you can leave a like here on this video if you're watching on YouTube and share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you're not already. It really does help grow this dumpster community and get the show out there into uh, more eyeballs, eardrums, and everything in between. And on that note, if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, uh, please leave us that five-star review. And if you have time, even write a review. That also helps a lot. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And if you want to keep up with the Dumpster Boys, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on any of the social media platforms, or you can go to MovieDumpsterPodcast.com. we got a store full of some good stuff. You can find out where we're going to be at, any uh, events and stuff. We're going to be at Monster Mania in Cherry Hill, New Jersey on March 8th, 9th, and 10th. And then we're going to be at Tapes from the Crypt at the Philomoca in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on 420 for a showing of Heavyweights, followed by a live Q&A with Sean Wise. Get your tickets now and you're not going to want to miss it. We'll see you there. A lot of good stuff coming up, Joe. A lot is happening in the dumpster. I think we even have a couple other things going on. Oh, yeah, man. We were just uh, nominated for a Rondo Hatton Award. Oh, which is kind of crazy. I was completely taken aback by that. Uh, a friend of ours messaged us on uh, Instagram mm -hmm. and was like, hey, uh, congratulations on being nominated. And I'm like, what the fuck? What That's is he we talking about? Yeah. And I was like, 
oh my god, we're we're nominated. So that, that was a big deal for us. Um, and you can actually vote now if you go to RondoAward.com. Um, it's email only. Right. Okay. That's the only way you can submit a, a to cast your vote is to is to send an email. So if you head over to RondoAward.com, you can find us in the 19th category for best podcast. And you can cast your vote to Terrico at AOL.com and make sure to get your vote in by April 16th. This is a huge thing for us. And of course, the dumpster community, too. You guys are the reason why this is happening because you have grown we have grown this show with us so big and so we're so grateful for that um and we're asking for your help again yeah. so we could uh, we so we can cinch that you know what i'm saying so uh yeah so we can so, beat mick garris out <laughs> yes yes <laughs> mick just, garris just, is probably gonna kick our ass uh, i mean he did just end his show but uh yeah. besides the point besides the point we love you mick Absolutely. No, of course we love Mick. It was just a, just a goof. But, you know, help us out, cast that vote, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty awesome. So, so yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, dude, Fatal Termination from 1990, baby. This action-packed, completely over-the-top insanity from Hong Kong. Yeah, it's pretty over the top. There's it's, some pretty crazy car chases in this, actually. There's there's crazy that. car chases, crazy stunts, uh, gun gunfights, gunplay, squibs going off all over the place. Cool ass kung fu fights and shit. Um, they get it in there. There's not a lot, but they sneak it in the kung fu. Oh man, there's there's Robin Shu and Moon Lee especially. Yeah, there's a bunch of uh, little fights going on here and there, but it's mostly like a crime drama movie. It's yeah. like a neo noir rather. It is. Uh, it has a lot of characters you're kind of jumping from uh, that are all kind of interconnected in this movie. Uh, have their little uh, part to the plot, if you will. Uh, which makes it kind of move along pretty uh, at a pretty good pace, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It keeps you on the edge of your seat for sure. Yeah. That's not that we're not going to break it down that way because it's going to get too confusing. <laughs> so we're going right. to just talk about it. It we're going to kind of put some stuff in chronological order yeah. and kind of connect the dots as we go through. Sure, because we're going to be like, and then this, and then I, and then they meet up here. But it's crafted extremely well. Right. No, I agree. Um, yeah, it's very suspenseful, and you don't know what's going to happen next, and who's no. going to go after who, and 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 why everything's happening. I mean, we definitely get our central antagonist yeah. very early on, but yeah, the, uh, the the spider web kind of goes out throughout the film. Oh, and, yeah, And dude. touches characters in ways you weren't expecting to be touched. <laughs> no, not at all. Don't ever think that analogy. Yeah. I'm gonna do. We're gonna do a little BTS now. I'll, a little BTS. I'm surprised you found even a grain of BTS. Well, this film, when you look it up on IMDb, has like a sentence <laughs> that I don't even think really is any actual trivia. It just says like Jackie Chan was attached to this film when it was released. No, that's not. Had, that's not true. I'm saying that's that's the only it, thing on IMDb. That's oh it. yeah. Well, what the thing on IMDb is that when it was released in the Philippines, they put his fucking name on the poster. <laughs> that's what it was as yeah. director. <laughs> Why? Which not? is not true. Which is kind of funny. Oh, they filmed this movie in the Philippines. We're really proud of it. But uh, Jackie Chan, just get that extra nudge. I don't know why they put that out in the Philippines. Yeah, it was big at the time, I guess, at, Jackie. At, at that. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. But I don't know. That's my only answer. But that's I just that's the only trivia I could find. <laughs> I mean, th there is a Jackie Chan connection. But we'll get to that. Oh, Paul, okay. Paul Wong is the uh, connection. Oh, okay. He's yeah. he's, he was a stunt guy. But we'll get to that. Sure, sure. Um, There's not too much in terms. Look, I'll be up front. Um... I'm still kind of new to the Hong Kong action flick stuff. Okay. I'm much more Japanese. I'm tapped into the Japanese stuff. Sure. Okay. Right, yeah, yeah. Like we talked about it last year. Like I know the Prisoner of Scorpion movies. I know the Pinky Violence stuff. I know the Japanese, the J horror stuff. I'm just more clued in to yeah. the. So the China stuff or the Hong Kong stuff rather is still kind of a new landscape for me. And um, I had the pleasure of being on the VHUS podcast uh, with Dirk Marshall to talk about the Peacock King. And that yeah. was fucking great. And it's always like a special effects extravaganza. And there's a lot of great um, kung fu stuff normally yeah. in, in, the, oh, yeah. in the movies. But like I don't really have a, a, a firm grip on it yet. I'm not I'm not I don't know too much about it. And I have a couple things like I have uh, encounters of the spooky kind and stuff. Okay, and I've seen yeah. uh what is that? Uh, uh, Bodybuilder in Hell, whatever the fuck that was uh, called. It's like the, it's like the Chinese Evil Dead. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I never heard of that, but now yeah. I need to look that up. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I'm not. Which I don't know if it's Japanese or Chinese. Eh, I have no idea. I'm also kind of in a similar boat as you, Joe. I definitely have seen a lot of the Jackie Chan early stuff. The Jackie Chan stuff, yeah. uh, Police story and stuff like that. Some of the Chow Young Fat and John Woo stuff. Yeah, uh, absolutely. From the mid-90s, early 90s. uh, Hard Boiled definitely comes to mind. Those are like stateside shit, though. No, no, no. that That was Chinese. No, no, no. I know, but I'm saying it was released here. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Like that, Rumble in the Bronx and all that true. kind of shit, Hard that, Boiled. That's a good point, whereas yeah. this is like the first time ever released in this the is, States, as far as I know. This is Hong Kong. and I, I don't know. I, yeah. It might be the first time released in the States. I'm uh, not sure, but it, it's fu- it, it might have been bootlegged. Or sure. I know that there's an English dub of it, so it was probably released uh, either on DVD or VHS. I'm not sure. I guess just to finish that thought before we get back to what you were saying, it's yeah. just uh, I guess I'm in a similar territory as you. I've seen probably 10, 20 of these films over the course of my life, maybe even 30 if I really sat here and thought about it, but mm. not deep in the lore. Uh, definitely know more about other genres of films, but I do love me some uh, Hong Kong action films. Let me tell you something. I, that's what makes me so excited, and that's why I wanted to cover this, because it's just a, it's fucking great, and I just mm. want to watch more of this stuff, man. It's no just OSHA. So... <laughs> uh, no safety people on set saying you can or cannot do a thing. For better or worse, uh, you get some incredible stuff in this film like we teased in that intro like Joe said yep. with the, some of the stunts in this film uh, are kind of insane uh, make me think of some of those early Jackie Chan films where you hear him talk about later and like well, I can't believe we did that I can't believe I almost <laughs> fucking died when I jumped through this thing and almost got electrocuted but we did it yeah. we're here <laughs> And it's like, wow. And it's like an, it's an insane movie to watch. Right, too, yeah. yeah. Uh, that this film fits that bill several times, actually. And it's not just it's not just a spectacle. No. I think it's acted really well and the story is fucking solid as hell. And it's and it's again, it's it's that neo noir thing where it's it's got that kind of gritty on the streets, uh uh dirty cop thing going on, yeah. drug dealers, guns dealers, arms dealers, things going on. And people caught up in the web of that. It's fucking cool. I just want to talk about like the director a little bit, and we'll, and as we go through, we'll talk about Moon Lee, and we'll talk about Ray Lu, and we'll talk about Robin Shu and and everybody and stuff and like that. Simon Yao, I think his name is Simon Yao, Detective Lee, and Philip Ko. Yes, and we'll talk about we'll talk about all of them. But yeah, Yang Wakam, or he's also built he's built with like a bunch of AKAs, sure. and it's that thing of like Americanizing the Chinese. Or Japanese people's names, Asian so, names, yeah. So, so that it, so that it's palatable for people in the U.S. because we can't fucking be bothered <laughs> to learn what how to say their names. Right. I mean, I'm kind of laughing, but it's almost like a nervous laughter for all those people in the the U.S. especially, but around the world. But yeah, he also goes by Andrew. Andrew, yeah. Uh, which, if you look this up, in some places he's uh, credited as his actual Chinese name, in other places as Andrew. And the credits actually credit him as Andrew. And I don't know if that was just error four 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 doing that when they subbed. The, uh, the film or not, but I think that I think because it's the English credits, that's the name that you would know him. Sure, as, no, that is makes Andrew sense. Com, you know. So anyway, he's he's done he's done a bunch of stuff. Uh, I I haven't really seen any of it, yeah. but now I want to after seeing this because uh, he's done the movie called The Big Heat. Uh, hmm. which is another movie that he's like known for, which I'd like to check out. Um, a movie called Heart of the Killer, Heart of Killer. Hmm. I'm not really sure. It's like in Chinese, like yeah. in the, on um, IMDb. Oh, I even, <laughs> and the, tra- even the so, translation yeah. on the poster says Heart of Killer, so okay. I don't know exactly. Um, and then he, does, he did, did another movie called Asian Cop High Voltage, which, sure, sign me the fuck up. That sounds great. Okay. <laughs> um, but if they're anything like this movie, yeah, I mean, sign me up. Yeah, got to be action thrillers uh, for sure, I would imagine. So jumping back to stunts real quick, because you were, we were just talking about all the stunts and stuff uh, about this. Uh, Ridley Shoy does um, the stunt coordination and most of the stunts in this movie. Hmm. Um, well done. Which we'll get to when we when we get to some of them, uh, okay, and I'll, I'll yeah. point them out. But sure. he he um he's a very established stunt guy, and he worked with the uh, the stunt crew, Jackie Chan stunt crew, and all of them in China. Which is pretty amazing, and like part of that school, and like um, martial arts, and how to fall, and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, really incredible guy. Um, there's a there's an interview with him on this error four 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 four, four disc. <laughs> that was four four. Sorry, yeah, I think uh, so. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> We'll keep a count. Take a shot every time we fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> or every time we get it right, whichever one's going to get you more drunk. There you go. Every time we say four. There you go. Oh, God. 
Good uh, night. You're already done. <laughs> but he does an, he has an interview on this, which is really great. And he talks a little bit about behind the scenes about doing the stunt coordination on the film and and taking all the falls and shit. And like mm. some of it's just like insane. Like that one pool scene that we were talking about before, before we jumped on the recording. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Guy getting thrown in a pool. Yeah. Holy shit. Underselling it. Oh, but my yeah. God. Um, we're jumping off a fucking roof. That three-story fucking fall into a tree that we'll talk about. He also plays Smoke in Mortal Kombat Annihilation and had done some of the stunt choreography on that. So there you go. With Robin Shu, of course. Uh, that fucking movie. Yeah, right. Robin Shu's in that too. Right. <laughs> yeah. He came back. Uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation is so fucking bad, but it just keeps eking back into the MDU. It's like that uh, it, literally around the dumpster. There's just like ooze dripping out. And it's fucking Mortal Kombat Annihilation. There's also another interview on the disc with uh, Mike Abbott, who is the big white guy with the giant muscles. That <laughs> right. fucking yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll get to him later, but th that's also on the disc. And um, I highly recommend this disc because they did a 4K restoration of this film, and it looks amazing. And the transfer is incredible. The transfer is great. They're a little indie studio. They've only done a, a handful of releases so far. Error four 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 is fucking rad and they're super nice dudes we got to meet them a couple times i think we met them the first time at monster mania in oaks and we got to see them again when i went to go to baltimore for the tapes from the crypt uh convention that right, was there. the pop-up the pop-up there um and i got to talk to logan who who's uh part of um you know the company mm -hmm. and he's super cool um and they're just doing really great work and it's so cool to see uh, a smaller company putting out quality ass releases like this um, and really putting a lot into it. I mean, this fucking disc is packed with shit. Like, I gotta open this real quick. I gotta show you some shit. <laughs> I was gonna say, I wonder if they did the work, but I guess they must have to do the whole dubbing process and everything because the whole movie's dubbed if I'm you not, wanna watch it that way. I'm not really sure. There might be an interview with the guys from Error 44444 soon. Right, on this channel. On just this like, channel. Just to clarify. Stay tuned. Of course, slipcovers are like the thing. I mean, I don't It's. Not, I don't need it, but it's always nice it's to have cool. it. It's pretty cool. I like the uh, the reflection on the logo there. Yeah. Makes I'm me think a, of a, a Pokemon card or some shit. I'm a fucking slut for Spock Laws, dude. That's like my favorite. Is that what they call it? Yeah, it's okay. called Spock Laws. It's like one of my favorite printing processes, and they've been doing it for years throughout other things, but I always appreciate it. Um, and again, like... I'm not I'm not a sadist like you are. I don't throw out the slip covers, but I also right. don't give a shit. There's a whole culture around slip covers. No, there is. Um, but in case everyone's wondering why I'm giggling over yeah. here like a madman, and people are sick about that shit because they're they are they only buy the movies for the fucking slip covers and then resell them, uh, which is bonkers to I, me. I was talking about or whenever I threw the last one out on camera to our uh, mutual friend Matt Curione, who's been on the show but not in a few years, and he just he seemed appalled. He was like, <laughs> "Oh my god, you're throwing them away!" Like, sorry, Matt. Welcome to the party. I do love them. No, I totally get it. And anybody else watching me hear this and just shriveling into nothing in the process, <laughs> I don't care. They're getting thrown out. But yeah, I want to let me crack this open real quick. I won't sure. take too much time doing this. But like, there's a bunch of stickers uh, in here. Yeah. Um, there's a fucking uh, a, a poster that I'm not going to unfold. No, don't. But do it's that. like a full size poster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's a cool little booklet in here, um, and it tells you all about the film and the behind the scenes, and it kind of does like a deep dive into stuff. And you're talking about not having any information on the film well, I guess online. There you go. Yeah, it's all in here. You know, don't just go off a of one bad line IMDb that <laughs> might be accurate or might just be somebody had to write something. So they do a lot of limited edition stuff too. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy shit. They have a new release coming out called um, Scissor Penis. It's a it's a okay. it's a crazy Japanese movie. It's and not Edward Penis Hands. No, it's not Edward oh, Pe man. Penis Hands. It's it's called Scissor Penis. Maybe we'll take. We're definitely gonna take that one on Patreon. Ah, uh, let's take it on Patreon. <laughs> Mini so sign me the fuck up for that. <laughs> but like they have like they had like <laughs> <laughs> those penises. They had they had a whole set where it like came with like condoms and shit and like all this fun shit. Okay. Um, but they but they the the first release they they did. Uh, I grabbed uh, Anatomy Extinction. That was the first release they did, and then they did some other ones. I can't remember. The names are escaping me. Sure. Um, but they also did Red Spells Red, which- I remember you talking about that. I haven't watched it yet, but I grabbed it, um, so I'll be watching it before we do that interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then report back. But 
they're just doing a really great job and it's like such high quality stuff i mean this is like this is like television vinegar syndrome type deals yeah. uh stuff um it, it's just really good quality and if you miss out on these you're going to be very upset because they're really great discs um so whenever there's a pre-order go check out uh error 44444 uh they're on instagram they're on all your social media stuff they got a website and stuff go check them out go subscribe go grab the newest releases you're not going to be disappointed well on that uh note joe i don't even know if i could plot crunch this but do you want to take a uh a, a penis hand stab <laughs> i was trying to do a, a scissor hands a, a, joke. Scissor, a scissor penis stab yeah, at it? yeah, yeah sure uh, um, if you, you saw the through line if you're watching or listening let me see if i can truncate this sure um, Robin Shu is a customs a a a, a customs crooked agent, a yeah. crooked customs agent who is making deals with this arms dealer Komok Fu, okay? And he basically he's the inside guy who can go into customs and switch stuff out and get guns and and all that shit. Um so he does. <laughs> and in the process, he ends up just getting too greedy. And involving this other customs agent who he has killed and then also involves his family because he's not getting to be police officers who happen to also be police officers that he also entangles in the web of deceit all for this money that he never actually gets. <laughs> right. Well, he might get pisser. it. Well, we'll talk about it. Yeah. I'm not sure if he gets it or not. Um and then also makes deals with these Middle Eastern guys and then turns everybody against each other. I don't know what the fucking end game here was for him. Uh, we'll talk about because that might be one of my uh, problems with the film is yeah. that, that that Robin Shu never really had a fucking plan. <laughs> He's got a lot of good plans, <sighs> but they never really meet an end where it works out. In, where it works yeah, out. Right. He figures out 95% of the plan in the last 5%. He leads up to luck and he's got shitty luck. <laughs> he's He's got some big balls on him, big he giant does. brass balls. Yeah, he does. Uh, like in Ragged, all those balls <laughs> that were hanging out of Kwame's uh, pants, that big pair asked him to tuck back in. But yeah, and then Moon Lee um, and John have to... Right, John, played by... His name's written down on my phone. We'll look it up. Well, Moon Lee's name is Moon in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, so Moon and John uh, are affected by uh, Robin Shu's deeds, and they kind of have to... They're kind of sucked in, and they, they're trying to figure out their brother's murder because we'll get to it. Um, and they're also avenging uh, their family. Right. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. That, that That's pretty much that's it. That's pretty yeah. much it. Without without talking about it too much, because yeah. I want to just kind of get into it now. That, that is kind of the point of the plot crunch. Give you yeah. the, the, the big points, crunching them, literally. Cro crooked cops doing bad shit, ends up entangling the wrong people who are also cops, and then they have to fight back. Uh, yeah, right. With some mob shit intertwined. Yes. Kind of. So the movie does kick off with this arms deal, and we get kind of these, I guess they call them Muslims. They're supposed to be Middle Eastern or Muslims or, I, I don't know. They're, they're Middle Eastern, but they're just white dudes with, like, brown makeup. <laughs> brown face, some serious brown face here. <laughs> Dan. Okay. Inspector Dan. Inspector Dan, which I thought this character was going to be more important, but then they're just kind of a tertiary background element throughout the film. Well, he they're a key person in the main deal. Right, but they don't end up being, like, one of your main, like, on-the-camera bad guys. Like, whenever they show up, they are important, but oftentimes you forget they're even a thing. So they're buying they're buying arms from this guy, like, right. guns. They're buying guns from this guy. The middle man, I guess. To bring back to the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. But it's, like, not enough. So right. They, so they call in uh, Mr. Ko, and he hooks them up with Wei, who is... Robin Shu's character. Robin Shu's character. And he's the customs agent, the crooked customs agent, which is going to get all of these guns that they couldn't get otherwise right through customs. And he's like convinced this is going to work. Like, I, I guess the implication is he's done it a few times, but now this is like a massive amount. Like when the Muslim guy's like, yeah, well, we need extra boxes, five million extra boxes. The guy running the boat's like kind of arguing with him about it at first. He's like, well, I could do it, but that's a lot extra. And the guy kind of threatens him with a pistol, but it's like not loaded. And they're both like fucking with each other. And I'm like, ah, yeah, criminals, of course, fucking around with unloaded uh, <laughs> weapons. Of yeah, This lines up. But then, yeah, Robin Shu gets involved and is instantly like, huh. How can I make money on this deal? Well, he's trying to... First, he does it for $3 million, and he makes right. a deal with <laughs> Philip Coe. Right, exactly. This mobster-type yeah. character who's got his muscle with him constantly. Who is now the middleman between 
Robin Shu and the Middle Eastern guys. Right. I shouldn't say the guy in the boat's the middleman. He just works for Robin Shu. I well, don't want to overcomplicate this more than I need to. Right. So Robin Shu is Officer Wei Long, and he is like the head of customs in China. At least for the sake of this film, yes. Yeah. And this is definitely like the evil version of Liu Kang. I just want to just go right into some movie dumpster shit just quickly. <laughs> Because, like, Robin Shu, not that, you know, we always kind of play this game with this the movie dumpster, right? Revenant Liu Kang? Yeah, Revenant Liu Kang. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Because yeah. he's got glasses on, obviously. Okay, yeah. Uh, he's evil because he's got glasses. He's got short hair, too. Short hair. Uh, he's got the uniform on. He's in it for himself. I yeah. might even be, uh, um, uh, what's his face, uh, in, in disguise as Shang Robin. Sung? Yeah, Shang Sung <laughs> as Robin Shu. We don't know the timeline on this one. Because we know... You know, MDU. Kerry movie- Tagawa is it? Right, it is could be Kerry yeah. Tagawa. Uh, movie Dumpster Universe, all, all movies are connected. <laughs> so, like, I know, like, Mortal Kombat happens. It's got to be after this. Or if it's if it's Revenant, Lou, this could just be a totally different timeline uh, unrelated to the Mortal Kombat, uh, uh, at least in the MDU timeline, where he then eventually ends up in uh, Beverly Hills Ninja with, with Chris Farley at some point after Annihilation, I guess. I'm going with Shang Tsung. For sure. Shang Tsung. Yeah. Um, it, it's so it kind of still be in the same hemisphere. It's as in far the same the thing because I don't because I because because Robin Shu's not an evil guy. That's I guess what I was kind of starting that with. I just you can play evil roles, but he just doesn't seem the type. And we've only really seen him in uh, good roles, at least on this show, at least in my own personal viewing, also. And it was kind of also an interesting uh, role to see him in this kind of. Uh, asshole bad guy who doesn't care about anything but what he wants and is just kind of lording shit over people throughout the film, uh, which was very interesting to see Robin Shu as. And he's fucking excellent, dude. uh, Yeah, him playing this character is great, but just the MDU shit is creeping into my mind. Like, how do I make this work? (laughs) He's kind of a dick, and Liu Kang is definitely not a dick, at least in the movies. Uh, And that's just kind of funny to me. I was like taken aback because I knew Robin Shu was in it, but I didn't know he should have been billed higher. Honestly, I didn't know how big of a part he had. Him and Moon Lee should have swapped billing, but I understand she was kind of big at the time. Robin Shu is probably one of his first movies. Um, it's actually I think it's like tenth movie, really ish, or like fifth mo- somewhere in the pocket. Wow, there. okay, yeah. that's kind of shocking to me. He's the main bad guy. That's what I'm saying. He's like the last He's on the billing. He's the fucking main <laughs> bad guy, At which least is out crazy. Of your top. Well, I guess because it's like, you know, that thing where they don't want you to know, I guess. Yeah. Stardom, hierarchy, that shit. But let me tell you something, man. Like, I was gonna, I was thinking about Mortal Kombat, and I love him in Mortal Kombat. I love him in Beverly Hills Cop um, as Gobe. New, uh, Ninja, not Cop. Or, Different excuse me, film. Beverly Hills Ninja. Well, I yeah. don't, Both great films, but. Both in my head. Well, now I just want Chris Farley to team up with Axel Foley. <laughs> And uh, oh my god, now talking about the MDU, we yeah. got to cover both of those movies and just do the crossover. <laughs> They're going together, yeah. Oh man, I wish that would have been a fucking movie for sure. Oh my, Farley and uh, uh Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. Oh my yeah. god, you know, in my head, I just I Robin Shu is Liu Kang, sure, right? Yeah. But after this, I'm like, fuck, I need to do a deep dive on his career Hong Kong films yeah. because maybe he's a bad guy in a lot of shit. I, I, don't, I know. don't know, man. He's like an assassin in another in another movie as well. That's so cool. I mean, and he's a great stunt guy and a great martial artist too. So it's so cool to see that on display. He is fucking killing motherfuckers <laughs> in this movie. Anytime anyone disagrees with him, he starts kicking him. Oh, dude, and then he great. pulls out a pistol. Oh, dude, we'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, we also do have this detective character, Detective Lee, who is going after Robin Shu, trying to figure out Jimmy Lee. What <laughs> Jimmy Lee trying to figure out what the fuck's going on with this uh, this smuggling operation? He's actually he hasn't been on an episode, but he was in a live watch along, one of the first live watch alongs. Yes, he's in Future Cops. Yes. Now I don't remember this character visually. I couldn't piece it together. I I didn't go roll back the tape to find out. But he plays uh, Ang Sing or Ah Sing, and I, I don't remember what character that was because it was the whole Street Fighter parody in that film. Uh, he's one of the Future Cops, right? He is. Is. He's got to be right. That was kind of cool to see him in this. I actually like this character. Towards the end, they I feel like they don't know what to do with him. But uh, for the most of this film, he's kind of the drawing or... He's the hard-boiled cop. He's the loose cannon. He is that hard-boiled cop. Exactly. Yeah, yeah he's the and, one pushing the plot forward. And when, he's, and when he's not chasing Mr. Co, you know, he's chasing he's chasing bad guys in a bobo with his brother, Mark DeCasco. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. In Double Dragon. No, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's putting that uh, the, the garbage inside the car to make it run. Yeah, I remember. Austin Powers is there putting the shit in there. Go back and check out our Double Dragon episode. We talk about it. Unless in there. we forget Alyssa Milano's ass. 
Yeah, we can never forget about no. that. Unfortunately, it's not even that nice of an ass. I mean, it's a pretty nice ass. It's a pretty good ass. Uh, oh. Bimmy and uh, Jimmy thought it was pretty nice. Uh, you know, <laughs> dump your drawers. Let us know. So before we before we get to like the first action set piece in this movie, um, I want to talk about. I want to introduce uh, Yan Yan, who's the uh, little girl, and uh, John and Moon, who is her mother and father, who are also police officers as well. Right. Uh, who end up kind of uh, end up being like our tertiary heroes, and then kind of are really flung to the forefront as the heroes of this film towards the end. But at first, they're just kind of friends with some of our protagonists. Yeah, we got Ray Lou playing John, and I think it's John in the in the they movie. Say Lou they a say bunch of Lou. times, so maybe it's I maybe don't know. He's Lou. credited as John. He's credited but... as John in the in the English thing. Yeah, but they say Lou, John Lou. I don't know. He was just a, he's he's another uh, Hong Kong star, um, and he was in Dragon Blood with Philip Ko, mm. and he's also in um, Devil Hunters with Moon Lee. Okay, so that's the connection with them, and a lot of these actors have been in other movies with each other. Um, and then of course Moon Lee is there, so I want to talk a little bit about Moon Lee because I do want to highlight her for uh, Women's History Month. Sure, because she is uh, you know a big part of the Girls with Guns uh, movies. And associated with that, so Absolutely. I wanted to talk about her a little bit, and and that's kind of why we picked this too. You know, again, it's not um, the lady kickboxer or or again fighting madam or anything like that. Right. But I mean, she does kick some ass in this oh, movie, she does. and she has some fucking crazy stunts in this because she is a stunt woman as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just want to talk a little bit about her. Um, she started as a dancer as a child, um, hmm. and because of her flexibility and discipline and stuff, she actually kind of segued into martial arts movies, which was kind of interesting. That's I didn't, cool. I didn't realize that. And then she also, I don't know if it, if she was a t- television star before or after, but she did a lot of stuff in Japan on TV. But obviously, she was a huge uh, Hong Kong '90s action movie star. And she's done a ton of stuff. Um, the Protector, Fighting Madam, Angel Enforcer, Devil Hunters, Kickboxers Tears, Enter Lady Kickboxer, Angel the Kickboxer, and a ton of other stuff. Um, really, really excellent actress, really excellent stunt woman and uh, uh, martial artist. And she's fucking incredible. And she's a really great actor, too. Um, has a lot of emotional range on her, especially in this movie. Yeah, especially, like, there's specific scenes where they really got her to act hard. Oof, man. Well, We'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to bring one thing up because she had a really bad accident. Um, yeah, like right, bef- right before this. Yeah, well, yeah, in Devil Hunters, which was eighty nine, so it was like right, yeah, like right before this, uh, where she was doing a stunt that dealt with uh, fire, and she got like severely burned. She had third degree burns on her body, like all over, um, it. and and really got fucked up from that stunt. And then did this like six months later or something like that? I was reading because this came out in ninety, so it's got to be like right in between. You're recovering like getting skin graft surgery and maybe that's why she's not in it as much maybe she was originally supposed to be in it a lot more and they had a pivot because she got lit on fire in it, her last movie it's possible but um she had burns to her face and her hands and stuff I like tell. i couldn't tell either and whether that's that, makeup or prosthetics or just the surgery was that good i mean a little ho- bit of all three. hopefully she just healed really well yeah. and, and was able to get through it by the doctors and stuff. Sure. That, I mean, good for her. That's fantastic. And that's a horrible accident. Again, what do we say? There's no safety protocol on these films. <laughs> well, there is all. safety protocol. They actually take, they're, they're very scrutinizing about the stunt work and stuff. Even though it's crazy shit, they're trying to be as safe as possible. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they are. It's just, again, certain stunts still happen where I'm yeah. like, how? Well, that was a, but I can see what you're saying. That particular thing was like a uh, pyrotechnic timing issue. So they set right, it off. She got lit on fire. Yeah, yeah. they set it off before she fucked and jumped and then she just was like a fireball that crashed to the ground That's, that happened to like The Undertaker once at a, at a wrestling event it was like Wrestlemania or some kind of pay-per-view and he got like lit on fire and like burned his eyebrows off and he got like third degree burns and he, I think shit. he still did the fucking match it's like crazy That's what can happen nuts, with man. pyro so yeah, shortly after uh, the 90s, she stopped acting and she opened up her dance school because she used to be a dancer. Yeah, okay. And it's like this prestigious, now she has like a prestigious dance school. I don't know if it's still going, but um, she's won a bunch of awards for it and the and uh, the people that went there and have done dance. So that's pretty fucking cool. That's good to hear about that. Yeah. So yeah. Jimmy Lee is put on the case because there was something going on with a, an arms deal. Right. So that's the that's the, so the arms deal that he's the case he's put on is the one that's by done by Robin Shu mm-hmm. in the beginning, 
and he they caught one of the guy the Middle Eastern guys they caught Dan Detective Dan or whatever the fuck uh, yeah, his name is again he's supposed to be Muslim or Middle Eastern again he's Middle Eastern uh, but he's white as fuck it's just some white guy he's even Brown got face. like a beard. <laughs> <laughs> and like they arrest him, like Joe's saying, and they get him in the car, but then like they don't handcuff him or anything. They're just going on the honor system because he gets in the back seat. And then, like, as the last cop goes to get in, he just kicks the door into them and fucking runs off. And somehow, in this chaos of uh, this situation, his parking garage, he gets a fucking machine gun. He steals a, he takes a gun out of the cop's oh, waistband yeah, yeah. and he shoots the shit out of He's like mowing people down. He kills in this scene, like, <laughs> like probably 20 or 30 people. Like, at least 90% of them were cops, but, like, a, t- a ton of civilians, too. It's this fucking parking garage, and there's just, it's full of people, and they're just getting mowed down, dude. There's squibs popping up all over the place. One of the cops fucking shoots somebody by accident? I'm like, holy shit. This is like Return of the Living Dead when they call, like, please send more cops. <laughs> like, the cops keep running in, and this guy just keeps shooting them. Uh, Moon Lee finally comes in with her husband, and they're, like, the only two that are like, yeah, get her, kind of walk around them. Like, let's kind of flank them instead of just running in and getting shot in the leg instantly. They're, they're just, it's like a whole fucking shootout. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, the, these, co- I don't know how it works exactly in China, sure. but there's like different ranks of officers. Military officers or something. Because I get there's it. like they military cops it. and like regular cops. And these are not like on the beat cops mm. because they're also like enforcers. They have like machine guns and like body armor and shit. Uh, it's definitely a, a case of we just don't know because they're assuming you're from Hong Kong seeing it because it must I, be normal to them. I just don't want to sound like an idiot. No, all. same. But I think that is what it is. It must yeah. be some kind of military branch that we're just ignorant about. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they all come in. Oh, actually, Lee is... The only other cop in the situation who's kind of got a handle on what's happening. I mean, he wants this guy caught alive, and that's he's killed like 30 fucking cops, 20 civilians. Like, they're not taking him alive. John eventually just corners his ass and is like, ah, uh, no, and just fucking unloads on him, drops like a full clip in his fucking chest. <laughs> it's like, oh, I wanted him alive. We need him alive. And it's like, he just killed 40 people. I'm sorry. We're not we're not saving this guy. Well, they needed him to close the arms right. deal, or not the deal, but the, the, the case, because they needed him to talk so sure. that they could fucking get, you know, uh, co or... or way as we talk about to get somebody yeah. right but yeah. yeah there goes their fucking leverage out the window yeah. but again the guy's going on a killing spree what are they supposed to fucking do at that point <laughs> so they light him up and that fucking dude is D.E.D. <laughs> Um, yeah, big time. And Jimmy finds like shit in his briefcase about the guns that are in the crates on the boat that are going through customs. Yeah, but then it just says like towels and shit. And he's it's, shaking his head like, oh, what the fuck? It says bullshit, but like the weight doesn't line right. up. So he's like, motherfucker. So he goes down to to the dock to look he's at like, the shit. He's looking around, like looking for uh, security guards and shit and yeah. just like climbs up these crates yeah. and starts breaking it open. <laughs> he's like, ah, panda bears. What the fuck? They switched it out. Before that, Way Robin Chu sends his guys in. They knock out this guy Mew. Oh right, that's important. Yeah, yeah. They knock out this guy Mew, who's who's the custom agent for that particular uh, spot, and they take the guns and they switch the crates. That's true, right? That's that's where the fucking trouble begins. That's Robin Chu, fucking, he's greedy again. We said that, but this is where he's like, ha. Huh. Okay, we're gonna get this to work. We're not gonna get caught. And then like he starts coming up with these other bizarre ideas that end up. Uh, May or may not work out for him, but yeah. Well, Jimmy goes and he fucking confronts Robin Shu. And he's like, he's like, you motherfucker. He's like, you wouldn't let me in there. And I know you, I know it's you. You you took the guns out of there and you replaced them. Like the only way this could be done is if there was a customs agent that was in there. So then Robin Shu thinks on his feet, cause starts he first starts yelling at Jimmy. Yeah. But yeah. then he's like, he's like, uh yeah, well, actually, look, I'm sorry. Here, let's figure this out right now. Okay, Officer Mew, can you come into my office, please? <laughs> Yeah, this poor bastard yeah. who already probably feels bad that he got clonked and like he comes in and he's like, yeah, I guess it's my fault because I got knocked out and then like I woke up and they were standing over me yelling at me that everything was stolen. I didn't really have any excuses. It's like just this guy, just this blue collar guy just trying to do his job. Uh, yeah, I guess he's in the military, but regardless. And, and Jimmy's fucking yelling at him. Yeah. He's, he's like, it was you, wasn't it? You stole the guns and you're you're the traffic in the guns and stuff like that. And he's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, he's right. like, no, I don't know anything about that, but they did knock me out. So Robin Shu suspends his ass, yeah. Mew, and he's like, all right, get the fuck out of here. You know, you can't, you, you're not, you're off the, you're off the force for now. You're suspended. Until this is figured out. I do kind of love how Mew, he then goes into the locker room and he's kind of talking to 
he doesn't know this, but he's talking to two of his uh, co-workers, and one of them is one of the guys that works for Robin Shoe, and he's just like, yeah, now that I'm leaving, he's like, it's going to suck, but you guys got to take up uh, my leverage. You guys got to pick up the slack. And he, guys, he means well. You guys are good cops. Yeah. yeah or like, whatever. Customs agents. I, I guess. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever, Mew. Get the fuck out of here. I got to take a shower. Yeah, you get you get Billy here and you get Little Devil. Billy, that's his name. Little Devil. I couldn't think of that yeah. guy. Did they ever actually say that? No, they just call him Little Devil. Okay, I missed that. I was like, the whole movie was like, the guy in the shower, the guy with the hair, <laughs> the guy with the eye. Like, I couldn't think he, of his name. He might have a name, but they, they, they refer to him as Little Devil. Yeah, but you're right. He is talking to Billy and Little Devil. You're right. Just kind of saying, all right, I'm out. I'll Billy, see you later. Billy's feeling terrible. It's like Mew's birthday. And he's like, come on, come hang out with me. It's my birthday. And he's like... <laughs> He's like, I got suspended, and it's my birthday. He's, he's like having this flashback of him like hitting him over the fucking head with the crowbar, and he's just like, Ugh, right, sorry. Bill, Billy is a character that I just think is just some random mook at first, but they really just Man. elaborate on this guy's character, he and has it kind of works. He has a great arc, dude. He has a really good arc. Because you're right, he is already kind of regretting it, but what is he going to do? Like, the plan's in motion. Yes, yeah. too late. Well, Mew sees that in Little Devil's locker, he like looks, he like goes to take a shower, and he like opens it up, and he finds all of the stuff from the crates, uh, which he would know instantly what it is, and is like, "What the hell?" And he's like, "Motherfucker, this is all the shit that was on that list." Um, so he takes it, and he goes to call uh, John. But he's already out because they were going out for their birthday outing. Right, yeah. Also, just I thought of Valentine instantly because we were joking on about that when we did our commentary track on Patreon. Uh, dot com slash movie dumpster for five and ten dollar <laughs> tiers. If you want to hear the Valentine <laughs> commentary track, but we were joking about there's that scene in Valentine where her fucking water turns off and she's got the shampoo in her hair. Yeah. And I was just thinking, a uh, little devil, he runs out. I mean, he's running out of the shower because he realizes, oh fuck, the goose is uh, caught. That's not even it. Cats out of the bag. Cats out of the bag. What well, goose is cooked? Goose, goose is cooked. I tried to make that work. Cats out of the bag. Yeah. So he calls John, or he doesn't call John. He calls Robin Shoe. Yeah. But I'm thinking about, hey, you know, wash your hair in the toilet or something, little devil. <laughs> anyway, he's all soapy, like running down the hallway. Like <laughs> his butt cheeks. Oh no! <laughs> he calls Robin Shoe, and Robin Shoe thinks he's got this on lockdown, and he does like the classic, like evil bad guy in the business chair, like turn with like the pen in the mouth, like, what do you mean he got the information? Well, guess we gotta kill him. Oh my god! So basically, previous to this, Robin Shu shows his big balls again to Philip Co. Yeah. and he's like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna give you your guns. I want another ten million. Yeah, or I want ten million instead right. of three million. So they so they go at it, and he's basically that's how he kind of like starts putting pressure on Co. and he's like he's like yeah I have the guns and you can give me the money and once I get the money I'll give you the guns <laughs> that scene though they're in the warehouse and they're arguing and fucking Co. pulls out this revolver and puts it in <laughs> sticks a, it in his mouth and he's like yeah you think I won't do it he's like well fucking shoot he's about to pull the trigger and he puts like a finger in uh, the chamber or whatever. I don't. I don't know anything about guns, but he makes yeah, it stop. Well, no, he puts his finger in the in the hammer. There you go. So the hammer, the hammer doesn't hit the bullet. Uh, just after Robin Shoe starts basically pleading for his life, just just not he even, waited just enough. Not even Robin Shoe is fucking cool as a cucumber. He's like, fine, you're gonna shoot me, shoot me. And then he gets up and he's like, fuck you. I, I want my money or you don't get your guns. Maybe he just winces. He has some kind of. Oh, uh, he's about to be shot in yeah, the head. Reaction, and then yeah, you're right. He does just throw it right back in the guy's face. He should have blown him away right then and there. <laughs> right? Uh, he screwed up. So yeah, Mew has the the documents that are going to put them away. The guys at the customs uh, agent and clear his name. Right, clear his name. Even though, again, he's just so nonchalant about the whole thing. Like, well, they'll figure it out. But now that he has the info, it's like, oh, So shit. Mew calls Ko and he's like, listen, this guy Mew's got to fucking die. And he's like, that's not my fucking problem. Give me my weapons. He's like, listen, man, if you don't take care of him, it's going to be your problem because you're going to come down with me. And he's like, motherfucker. And like Robin Chu tries to play this off like he knows what he's doing, but like, oh, I didn't condone murder, but you totally did because you're calling this fucking mobster up. Oh, no, he knew what he was doing. I know, but he tries to act oh, like he Oh, he plays didn't. it off like, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about because uh, he's a real piece he's of shit. He's a weasel. He's yeah. a fucking weasel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Co just basically goes after him, you. He goes in his apartment and yeah. he's like, I want my documents back. Then there's this fucking crazy scene where like... Mew like punches this fucking guy down the stairs and he like falls back down the stairs. That was a pretty cool. I thought Mew stunt. was getting away for a second, yeah. but then Co pulls the fucking pistol out. Dude, he takes he takes that. the documents and he fucking punches him over this uh balcony in his apartment complex. And he's holding onto a fucking antenna. Meanwhile, 
Moon and John pull up because they're getting ready to go out for his for birthday. For the birthday. They, and not any sooner they, do they get out of the car and walk a little bit down the street to go to the apartment. Fucking uh, Co- He says, fuck you. Co goes, fuck you, and hits the hits the uh, antenna, and he falls, Mew falls right into the car. And he it falls just, through it's, a fucking sign. Dude, he goes through a sign and into the car fucking Harry Lime style, <laughs> oh. and it just explodes. And then he's like, he's still kind of barely alive, and then just like dies in their arms, more or less. <laughs> Fuck like, up. Mew, no, oh my god. Well, well, Mew is Moon's is Moon's brother, right? Yeah. yeah, and they're all very close. I actually I, said that right, Mune. Mune. Mune is yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, Mune is Mune. Yeah, is that Moon. is yeah. That is kind of yeah. hard. That's to why say she quickly. chose it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but then we get this uh, in, elongated uh, funeral scene, which I kind of like, where we kind of first get. The picture. You think he might actually live? There might be a smidge, in, Dude, a smidge of a chance he might survive, but no. You totally missed the the car chase part. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry because there's the whole car chase, Dude, where John is like goes John, to run up to someone to, for help, and he realizes they were part of it. No, no, it's, it's Co. It's Co. And he yeah. doesn't realize, and you just and he gets away. It's like the, a real Uncle Ben situation with the fucking uh, the killer, the right? Killer the killer man. You're right. I shouldn't forget that part because even this is all screen, but John rips the whole roof. John of the rips car the off. whole fucking roof of the he, he must Drive have down the car. Pull, it's pull, a again. Pulls Mew off, takes the whole fucking top off, and he's and I was dude, thinking about that, he, like how that went down, but. This reminded me of the Batman with the penguin chase. Oh, like that style. That kind of style, chase man, little, because yeah. like it's like Hong Kong drift, man. He's fucking flying down this freeway to catch up to this car and he finally finds it. He fucking just pulls out a revolver <laughs> next to Ko and he's like, pull the fuck over. I love how Ko even gets like a mini flashback. He's like, who the fuck's this joker? And he remembers, oh, he shot my old business partner. So, and he's like, he's a cop. So it turns out that. Uh, John had busted Co years before and killed like his fucking brother, right? Brother, in this I drug guess, deal, yeah. and like you know, it was a sting yeah, operation. Yeah. And he's like, "Motherfucker, it's Co." And Co pulls out a fucking shotgun, and these cars are going around this Hong Kong freeway, and he's just unloading this fucking shotgun on them, and it's really awesome. Co also loves to just prop the shotgun up, like on the <laughs> on this corner there, like where the, uh, the the side mirror is, that little corner. Dude, he's blowing off his fucking door. His roof goes, or his uh, hood goes flying off. This car finally pulls out, and uh, Co's car swerves, and. Uh, John's car smashes into it, but right before that, he like fishtails out and pulls, shoots the gun out the window and fucking blows the driver. driver. It shoots him right in the head, and then it goes, goes off a dock, flying off a dock, dude. I'm sorry, but it, I, I had that to explain that because it's just so fucking cool. And I guess John just assumes that Co's dead. I mean, as you would. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess he somehow miraculously got out of there. Maybe he had a fucking oxygen uh, tank in the back seat that he puts on. I don't Obi-Wan know. Obi-Wan gave it to him. You know, the little yeah, fucking- those little things yeah. from, from Phantom Menace. Okay. Yeah. He survives, though, because we, we need that final confrontation. He, he also has a similar scene at the end now that I'm thinking about it, but we'll get there in a second. There's like there's also little interstitial bits between like where he talks to Moon and about her brother's death yeah. and like he doesn't want to upset her but he tells her that it's Co and like he could still be out there and now we have to fear for our, the family and stuff and he's like I gotta go stop him and Moon gets really upset about that right and this is where we do get those funeral scenes where uh, we have like Billy's like crying and grabbing the casket clearly yeah. blames himself and then like they had the actual ceremony and Lee shows up. And he's like, I'm not even here to give my uh, condolences. He's like, I just came here to prove a point because, like, Rob and Shu were all there. And it's like, what the fuck? And he's like, oh, your brother and your sister. Oh, you killed your brother. Both of you conspired. Why'd you do it? And he's really- I guess that's what he really thinks. Putting the pressure on him to, like, confess. And Billy's, yeah. like, about to crack because previous to this, Billy goes and confronts Rob and Shu. And then Robin shoots. Oh yeah, he puts his thumb on him big time. He's like, "I'm gonna take you down, motherfucker!" And Robin shoots like, "Oh yeah!" And he pops in a fucking VHS tape, and it's like Billy <laughs> him in the head. It's it's Billy hitting hitting Mew in the head and taking the crate out like red handed. I don't know why you ever agreed to this. I I get that like in retrospect, people have money. remorse, money. Uh, and, and you're now realizing you basically got one of your best friends and coworker killed. He feels the bad. pressure's on. He feels bad that, you know, he did that to him, but he was, like, willing to let it go, but after he died, he's like, this is a, I, no, this is fucked up. He which, was a good dude. Which makes him an asshole, too, but at least he shows remorse, so you, I kind of like him by the end of the film, and I, I he think goes out in a blaze of glory, he, so. He becomes a martyr for, uh, 
for uh, for uh, Mew for sure. Yeah. In fact, in that scene when he does uh, confront Robin, she, there's this. It, it's not meant to be funny, but Billy's like, "Ah, you cocksucking motherfucker! <laughs> I'm gonna take you down!" And that's when he lays the law on. I'm like, "No, you're not. I have the tape." But I just thought that was funny. Like he really was about to beat Robin Shoe's ass. Oh yeah. And and just no, you're not. I have evidence against you. He's like, "You got the wrong guy. Look at that TV. There's the bad guy." Right. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was pretty evil as shit. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Robin Shu does another face turn. Now he goes to the Middle Eastern if guys. If you want to call it that. I, I, well, he's he's I, he's like making every pitting everybody against each other trying to get this money. And he basically tells them that like Co is fucking you over. I if you want your guns, you're going to have to go through me. So but it's 20 mil now. But it's 10 mil now. Oh, we didn't get to the 20 mil yet. I forgot. And he's like, what the fuck? He's that's like, a lot. That, he's like, that's insane. I'm not giving you that money. Robin Shu fucking puts the smack down on this guy's ass, fucking kung fu's his ass down, and then shoots him in the fucking head. <laughs> you know what? I think you're right, actually, because there's another scene later where he extorts them for more. Yeah, yeah I couldn't believe that. He, he beats the shit out of the guy and shoots him, and they're all just like, uh, all right, 10 mil it is. Yeah, I guess so. We need our we need our guns for whatever we're doing back east. Uh, we keep losing guys. But we're not going to have enough guys to hold the guns if yeah. we keep this up but okay so here's the here's like some of the real fucked up shit so jimmy's jimmy is getting wise to robin shoe and he bugs his apartment and he's like on the other side and, and jimmy's yeah. like watch him across the way with the papers on the window with the papers on the, the binocular vision now the plan now is to have ko kill john moon and yan yan Right, the little girl, by the, the way. The little girl. Fucking, like, four-year-old, by, if that. By setting up a fake, like, call where he's going to be like, oh, Mew's family stole your guns or something. Meanwhile, he's making a deal with the Middle Eastern guys to get the 10 mil, and then he's going to give them the guns anyway. Right. But he needs coded dispatch of the people that are hot on his trail in a way where it's indirect. He right? twisted himself into a fucking pretzel to yeah. make this work. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. I mean, there is logic behind it all, but it's like, holy shit, you're really just twisting this knot. He's using what everybody wants against them. Right. You know what I mean? Robin shoes across the way, and Jimmy's across the way watching him. He is fucking on to Jimmy. He knows yeah. that he's being bugged. He says, like, a bunch of shit, and then he's like, hold on a second. And he looks out the window, and he fucking winks, and he, like, pulls the bug out, finishes the conversation. And when he walks back in, it's like a chicken in a robe. Yeah. And Jimmy's like, what the fuck? Meanwhile, Hamburger Man, who's been eating hamburgers oh, the whole fucking movie. Oh, my God. His po- this, this new partner the Chief fucking uh, yeah. saddled him with, who's just like, yeah, I gotta get used to these new hours. I'm not used to this. He's, like, clearly a desk guy yeah. who just gets fucking taken out with a, with a broken neck gets smashed into the wall by uh, uh, Robin Robin Shu from behind. And then in this kind of unique, not kill, but almost kill. Tries to fucking garrot Jimmy. With the fucking headset. He just breaks it and like pulls the cord (laughs) on it. I was like, wow, I never thought of that. A fucking headset cord. Uh, But but Jimmy barely gets away, kicks away. They kind of have a little bit of a scuffle. They fight each other. And then Robin Shu kicks him out of a fucking window. And this is- Dude, he fucking flies out the window into this pool, man. It's Well, Simon insane. Yao was fucking really trying to make that dive. He was not chancing the concrete two feet to the left. That's Ridley Shoy flying out the window yeah. into the pool. Oh, okay. That it's makes so more crazy, sense. man. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really cool shot. And then yells up, oh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> like, can you catch your breath for a second there, pal? You just jumped through a fucking window. Fatality. Yeah, exactly. He, he wished the fucking pit was down there. But no, just Robin Shu escapes. So Robin Shu thinks he's fucking living large. She's kicking it in a sauna. Oh yeah. And Co, Co comes, shows up. Co shows up and he's like, Where the fuck are my weapons? And he's like, he's like, Don't worry, you'll get your weapons. He's still talking smack to this he's guy. He's still fucking dude, he's poking the bear. This and then Co grabs him by the fucking head and almost shoves his face into the into the sauna hot rocks. Oh god, like Jason Voorhees. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just saw Robin Shu literally break a man's neck by snapping it, like <laughs> snapping it like a chicken. But okay, I guess Co could take him out too. I guess when you get your eyeballs that close to hot coals, nothing's gonna matter how strong you are. Maybe he's being coy because, yeah, like, well, yeah, because he that. probably because he needs him still to do his dirty True. work, right? He could dispatch his ass real right quick. I mean, I don't think he was expecting hot coals to the face, mm-hmm. so maybe he underestimated Co a little. But you're probably on to something there. But Co's even like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? It's like a Scarface thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, you think. You're hot shit, but actually he is hot shit. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know who you're actually yeah, yeah, dealing yeah, with. Exactly. Yeah. So then this is where finally 
now Ko's on a warpath because he's like, because Robin Shu gets the call and he's like, what? Uh, yeah, Muse, Muse family, the little girl stole all your guns and, and, and John and, and Moon and what? That's crazy. And he tells Ko this. Yeah. Well, Ko like, overhears it. <laughs> he, yeah, right. He does it all over the top on purpose, though. Yeah. You're right, yeah. Th- th- that's it. The deal is sealed. He has to go I kill them, I guess. Or he's like, instead of like putting the pressure on fucking Robin Shu, he goes and abducts this whole family to get his guns back, his weapons back. Yeah, you know, because it's this whole thing where they're trying to blame Mew for it, and then Billy finally is like cracking and is like, "Oh, well, I, I might know something, but I, I, I might not know know something." And then oh, that was at the funeral, though. Yeah, at the funeral, but there's like that whole scene there where he's like cracking, and then now he finally does crack, and it's like starting oh. to spill the beans to John. Like, actually, uh, I know what happened exactly, and Mew got blamed, and it's killing me on the inside <laughs> that he's the one taking the blame. And then they team up, and yeah. and they they go track down Little Devil because he because he's only half the team. He Little Devil knows where the guns are. He doesn't. So they go track this guy down. They beat the shit out of him. They do, and they bring him to the um the yard the with all the shipping containers. Yep. And they get him to show the guns, and man, again here too, there is some cra- There's some really good stuff. Oh, you know what we didn't mention? I just want to bring it up sure, real yeah, quick. Yeah. In the beginning, when Jimmy is he's like fighting people in the in the fucking warehouse with the crates, yeah. and he's like kicking people and they're like falling off and their fucking heads are like hitting ladders and shit. Yeah. The security guards. It's fucking the crazy. The well-trained security guards. Those falls are insane. But the same shit kind of happens here yeah, because yeah. Uh, Little Devil tries to get away. And well, he, he says, oh, I'm actually working with you guys. I was forced to do it. Robin Shue forced me to do it. <laughs> Little Devil kicks Billy off this fucking shipping container and he just lands like 40 feet down on his back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's like, it, that might even be what causes Robin Shu to send uh, the big dogs in, or it might be concurrently happening, but this is he where- He doesn't it, even know that they're taking the guns. Okay, yeah. but around the same time as when he sends people after Moon Lee. Well, that's when Ko- Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to get the timeline right, So these are, these are happening- close to each other. Sorry, they're happening at the same time. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, So they get the guns. So then Moon Lee is like bringing her kid to fucking dance practice or something, preschool. I don't know what it's, it is. It's dance school, which is kind of- Funny because yeah, I guess because Moon said Lee that. was the dancer and stuff, so I thought that was kind of a cool way to kind of work that in. Yeah, yeah, and then this random like this insane looking white dude. I guess he's being driven. That's by Mike it. Abbott. Mike Abbott that yeah. we were talking about earlier, being driven around by these yakuza types, and he just well, they're not yakuza. His... It's China. Well, what, what would it be then? I don't know the term. Well, Mobsters. Well, well, it's it's the it's the guy. It's Coe's guys. Coe's guys. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the right term for that would be. Mob mob guys. Coe's guys. But Hitman, they grab this fucking little girl by the hair. This out the back seat. Apparently, is one of the danger, most dangerous stunts ever put to film, I, and I would have to agree. I would you? wonder why. I, I don't care how locked in you got. You got some fake wires, or you got some kind of something that that makes that a, a stronger uh, hold. But if that's just hair to hand, my God, this heavy grabs this little girl by the hair and picks her up and they just fucking peel out and they are driving and they're Fast. holding this little girl as they're doing this crazy car chase and Moon Lee is on the, on hood, the, hood. Of the hood of the car smashing the fucking <laughs> windshield open and beating the shit out of Paul Wong who is, uh, yeah. Paul Wong is uh, Jackie Chan's yeah, like yeah, yeah. right hand guy. Okay, there's the Jackie Chan connection you There's the Jackie about. Chan connection. And the whole time this little girl's just being held She's also beating on the driver, grabs him by the tie and shit. And I'm like, your kid, your kid, your kid, by the way. That's Paul Wong. She grabs him uh, by the tie and she's like fucking trying to pull him out of the car. I know you got to do anything to stop this from happening, but maybe don't go after the driver. Let him keep driving. And then you think like, well, the driver just got fucking taken out. I guess they're just going to crash. But then like the big guy's like, while he's holding this kid out the window, he just somehow, I guess he's got extendo arms or some shit, stops the vehicle. Well, he pulls the e-brake. Oh, is that? Okay, that yeah. makes more sense. And uh, and they go flying off the car, Moon Lee. But and, mind you, this is the after other like two or three minutes of driving around <laughs> this Hong Kong freeway yeah. with this little girl yeah. being held by the hair. Ten different camera angles. And they're angles. like fighting on top of the car as it's going. Um, get as many angles as we possibly can to endanger this child because we're only going to be able to do this once. But let's do it ten fucking times. <laughs> so okay. So the way they did this, it is very impressive. The way that they did this was there was a there was a pipe that ran. That's what I was thinking. In okay. his arm, and then 
onto the pipe was a harness, like a specially made harness for the little girl. So I think there was like, I think there was something around the pipe and his wrist as like a safety for her. And then he had her hair in his hand. So she's, so his arm is on the, right. the window and it's attached to the pipe. Right, the so it's, so it's stable. It. Yeah. It's just out the window, like straight. Still scary as fuck and so, insane. So as safe as you could possibly do this incredibly unsafe stunt. Sure. Uh, apparently, Ridley Shoy hooked himself up to the pipe, and they drove his ass around to test it first. That's what he said. Put the mother's heart at ease. Okay, my kid, strap and him if it, on. And if it's like if it can carry this grown ass sure. man around like that, then it should be fine for the little I, girl. I'm glad it exists. Yeah. It's an incredible piece of cinema. It, I just am like, holy fucking shit! No are, wonder these these laws exist now. <laughs> like we are we, we are not doing it justice. Like you need to see uh, it yeah. to believe it. Watch the movie or the yeah. video version of this this podcast yeah. to see what the fuck we're talking about because it is insane. It is insane. And this this child actor. Probably some real tears there, screaming. They're probably not actually going 50 miles an hour. It's probably the way it's shot, but it looks like they're going 50, just whipping around these things. I was thinking about, uh, I mean, very different scene, obviously, but coffee. I mean, that was clearly just a dummy being dragged behind a, a car. Yeah, that wasn't just real. A, a car whipping around with a fucking person, and it's like actually oh, a person this time. There is actually a couple shots in coffee where there is it's a, a stunt dude person. behind the car, yeah. Uh, it's that just, one, when he gets like slammed into the curb that one time, I think we were talking about it. It was like, oh, it's shit. It's possible. Okay, yeah. yeah. But uh, crazy fucking scene. I think it, it's it got to be in the top five craziest ever, like up there with some Buster Keaton shit. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> though. No, I like, agree with you. Really start thinking about the semantics. Like, I wonder how many of the actors and and stunt people on set were like really nervous about that, or like thought about it later and like, wow, we could have killed somebody, but we didn't. I mean, you can say that about so many films. If you want to sit here and really split hairs, but it's like, whoa, you are like, I was on the edge of my seat. I was like, oh, I know know everything's going to be all right. It is one of those scenes. It's just like holy shit. And then Moonley flies off and. She's 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 taken her and the little girl are taken to or Yan Yan rather are taken to Ko. And he's like right. outside and he has them all and she like tries to go fight Ko for the girl. Which is where I thought we were gonna finally get that like heavy duty woman impairment. I mean, we're like an hour into the film. We only got about twenty five minutes left. I, I think so. I, I think I, I thought we were gonna get more of her kicking his ass, but I guess plot still needs to happen. Bro, she fucking throws it down with him, yeah. kicks his ass, kicks two other dudes' asses, and then fights him again. They, but you they know, start breaking ha- the weapons out, of course. Yeah, and then they and then he puts her down and then they you know, and then they hold the kid and they're like about to you kill the kid. You are right though. She does take out like six guys, but it's like she ten against him one. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, there's, there's no, no way. way she could do it by herself but they do kind of the classic spider-man thing where it's like oh yeah call up uh daddy call up john yeah. lou whatever he's called she and even dude like i just said she was on the she jumped on the hood of a fucking car punched through the windshield and punched through the fucking windshield uh, and was ripping this dude out like that, you are know, right man. That that's sequence. some fucking badass shit I, I, i'm agreeing i was just yeah. again like i said earlier i was expecting a lot more it's not fully focused on that's the, what i wanted yeah. right but but when she's when she does do shit it's like insane no yeah yeah i, will I, I mean that's it. like the that's like this that's like the masterpiece stunt of that the whole is, movie yeah especially when you think about how they actually did do yeah. that it wasn't just on a stage <laughs> which is crazy somehow co makes a call to john at when they're like stealing the weapons to or the whatever. construction site to the oh, construction there's a phone site. there whatever don't but, think about that's it that's fine i'm fine with it it's yeah. whatever um, but John uh, goes to meet them and um, has his gun out and he's looking for them. <sighs> Jesus Christ, this is a this is another big part, right? This is I would say this is like this is like the first climax of the movie. Yeah, I guess because yeah, like yeah. It, it's just very intense. Like Yan Yan and Moon are held up by ropes. It's like a real Riddler situation. Like, yeah, I said choose, Spider-Man, but it choose, is more like choose, that. You have to choose, right, who you're going to save. Or, it, yeah, it, Spider-Man works, too. Comic book-ass Comic shit. Comic book-ass yeah. shit. But it, it's scary because, like, you have to make that decision. And they're just regular ropes. Yeah. They're just held it's up. It's not a chain. It's and, not, like, and handcuffs or something. Ko's got a fucking knife, and he's just slowly, like, cutting a rope, right? To the little girl's rope, by the way. Yeah. And John is there, and he wants him to tell us where his weapons are. And John's like, I don't know where your fucking weapons are, because I don't have them, obviously. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, he does now. And he's like, look, I'll give them to you. Just let my family go. You you only want me, like, leave them out of it. So this is, this is a really intense scene, because he breaks free and runs at 
Mike Abbott. I just wanted to talk about Mike Abbott real quick because like he was uh he did a lot of Hong Kong action movies in the 80s, which I thought was really interesting because I was like, who's this big white guy? <laughs> right? He was just hired to hold a girl out of a window. Um no. yeah. And so he's been in movies uh, like Hands of Death and Hitman the Cobra, official, all the official extermi- exterminator movies, Rage of the Ninja, um, and The Final Score, which hmm. was, I believe, an uh, Indonesian film. Okay. But it's just kind of cool, and his story's kind of fun. He's got an interview on the on the, yeah. the disc, and um, it's just interesting because he's this guy from England <laughs> okay. who ended up in Hong Kong, uh, and the- was just like kind of, he was like, I don't know, I just started doing movies, and that was that. He's got a very From unique Cornwall. Look. Okay. He's got a very unique look. His eyes are kind of popping out of his head. He looks like that classic like bodybuilder. Yeah, a little guy. bit. Yeah. He's even got the, like the gap in his tooth. Uh you expect him to last a lot longer. He's called in like he's one of the big dogs, and then John just beats him like nobody's business in like five seconds flat. Not even, dude. He like throws a kick at him and he like grabs him and twists it around and he's like beating the shit out of this guy. And like John just rages out and yeah. like pushes him towards the edge of the building and ends up throwing this fuck because because Yan Yan's about to fall to her death. Right, yeah, yeah, he yeah. pushes this big giant guy into a fucking uh spike that's right. on this that's, that's on this be- door. Right, protruding from the door. But it does kind of I was expecting more, but in the dire situation, I guess he's just gotta get business done. Dude, he pushes this guy onto this fucking door. Comes and, right through his chest. And no sooner than that, the rope snaps on Yan yep. Yan, and you're like, oh fuck. But then Billy reaches out and grabs Yan right. Yan, runs up the stairs, throws John a gun. John grabs the gun, blows away two of Ko's guys. He's about to fucking kill Ko. Um, but uh Billy lets um Moon out, and then Ko takes her as a hostage. Right. So they put the guns down. Now they're all wrapped with fucking dynamite. And this is the real dynamite. This ain't the P.D. Wheatstraw dynamite made out no. of hot dogs and paper. No. Uh, this stuff looks like some serious shit. And, uh, you know, Ko likes to talk a lot. He's your classic villain who doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. So while he's just chit-chatting, talking about how he's going to kill them, how he's going to savor it, how he's going to enjoy it, Billy just somehow finds it in himself to just say, you know what? I'm breaking free of this bitch. You got to set the scene here. John is hanging up by a rope. Oh, right, yeah. And Co is beating the fuck out of him with a like baseball a bat, like a pinata. Meanwhile, Yan Yan Moon and Bill and Billy are all tied up with the dynamite. Right. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's not John. It's the baby and the fucking woman and, and the guy who's betrayed everybody. So Billy... Like you said, pulls out of his ropes and he goes running like kamikaze style at straight up at Ko and he's like, "You motherfucker, this one's for you," and he goes to grab him and he just sidesteps him. He flies off the building and just explodes in midair. The motherfucker explodes in a spray of gore and it gets all over John. Yeah, all over his face. I mean, Billy. Great idea, had uh, trying to make up for the horrible thing he did. Close. He almost got it. But I'm instantly thought thinking of, uh, again, came much later, but King Kong Skull Island when the one guy has all the grenades trying to sacrifice himself and it just fucking kicks him yeah. in the, into a mountain, <laughs> does yes. no damage. Hits him with the tail. Uh, I got kind of weird dark humor inserted into this film. It definitely is not played for dark no. humor. Uh, we're kind of finding the dark humor in it. It's actually incredibly tragic. But it's like, damn, Billy, you at least tried. And he did buy them a moment at least. But oh. it actually leads to uh, the the baby getting fucking killed because then now, like, Ko's like, fuck this. Oh and my just God. starts unloading. And, like, it's not even, like, by accident. I mean, he tries to look like, oh, I didn't mean it. No. But, like, he aims at this fucking two-year-old, this four-year-old, whatever it is, very, very small child that just says, good night, and he, unloads. He just pops her right in the chest. I was, I went, oh! I, I was like, nah, no was way. Shocking. I was like, this poor girl was, like, hung by her hair outside a fucking window. Right, the actress, She was hung yeah. by a fucking rope, and she dropped three stories and was saved. Oh, man, is it okay? I know we, like, held your kid out of a fucking moving oh vehicle, God. but can we also put this, like, very fast-moving squib right on their chest? Oh, my God. It won't hurt at all <laughs> trust us in the context of the movie though it's just like a shocking beyond fuck belief. i was just like holy shit how do you come back from that and you that's don't. why uh, i mean we do get our revenge here at the end here yeah. but i was really like i wanted this a little earlier i wanted like more revenge yeah. more coffee more kill bill more shit like that but that's not really what they're going for here yeah. Uh, cause now Ko's just booking it the fuck out of like, jumps off the fucking building, like a three story building right into a tree. <laughs> he just killed this woman's kid. She's screaming in agony. He ain't chancing it. He's not, getting the fuck out of there. He didn't even shoot them. 
He just shot right. the girl and then ran. Exactly. I was like, you fucking scum. He's a fucking pansy. He's a loser. So uh, so John and, Mew- and Moon set up Robin Shu. Yes, they do. Robin Shu's like, <laughs> now they're all fucking dead. I'm coming to get my guns to give to the Arabs so I can get my 10 million. Right, well, now he's going to make it 20 million. Or 20 for the million. Muslims now, because yeah. he's like, fuck them. <laughs> they're the only cats in town now. <laughs> but, like, Robin Shu's going to meet with them to have this big, like, handoff. No. Well, well, yeah, the yeah, the Middle Eastern guys. Yeah. So he goes down there. And he opens up the fucking thing, and and John is standing in there with a gun pointed at him. And this is a really heavy scene too, man. It's like raining. Yeah. Right. They just had th- their daughter just was shot and killed. There's like a little scene with Moon, and she's like looking at a picture, and she's like crying on it and stuff. But um, man, they jump down and they fucking wreck his shit. <laughs> they beat the shit out. They, they take turns. Beat the shit out of Robin Shoe. They smash. They John fucking. Punches the fuck out of him, kicks the shit out of him. Moon Lee fucking smashes his head against a, a sign and then like kicks him into a fucking fence and like starts drowning him and shit. Oh, yeah. Um, so then they can, and then they get him to take them to Co. Right. And they're going to meet up in the desert. And his big, what, what Robin Shu was going to do was tell Co and the Middle Eastern guys to go meet each other in the desert like he was going to make a deal and then they were going to end up killing, killing each other right so they go out there and they use uh robin shu as bait and ko is there like hiding behind <laughs> with his super sniper with his rifle fucking giant like it's like this it's like the aliens machine gun with yeah. the rock with the grenades in it and also like he could have totally killed everybody if he really wanted to because he notices everybody hiding he's like huh that's kind of weird that moon's over there and that robin shu's <laughs> over there Huh, I guess I'll just observe for a while. And then he sees the Muslim guys and he's like, huh? Yeah, those guys that we were supposed to do the deal with. Why is he meeting just them? And of course, he's got a fucking microphone or a speaker or something on this sniper rifle because they got to hear what they're saying because uh, it's a movie. But I it's like least, a Sentai episode uh, where, like, the, you know, they're in the big canyon. It's like a the, video game or something. And the some bad shit. guys in the middle. Yeah. Right, no, well, exactly. Yeah. But I'm just thinking about that trope of, like, all right, unless he's got a fucking monitor or like a transmitter on him, there's no fucking way Co would have known what they were saying. Well, but it's, whatever. It's pretty obvious, though. Sure. Sure, like sure. the Middle Eastern guys, but he hears it. He's like, "Oh, twenty million! What the hell?" Well, no, because he doesn't know what's going on. And then he sees the Middle Eastern guys get out, and they're talking with Robin Shu, and he's like, "Motherfucker, okay. you took my weapons and my money!" It's possible I'm misremembering that, but that does happen. He, he comes out with the gun, blowing them away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, big time. He shoots three or four of them. Then Moon is fucking firing on him, her and John. They just oh, basically man. kill all these guys quickly, and Robin Chu well, gets in his car with all the weapons. Well, Robin Chu's about to get blown away by the, one of the Middle Eastern dudes, and he, like, gets, he, he like takes the gun and shoots him. Moon Lee comes fucking out with two Uzis, with two Uzis and two assault rifles, and she's just fucking shooting at, uh, at Ko in his car. Uh, yeah, and then we get another car chase. It's a car. It's two cars. It's Robin Shu and Co. like chasing each other, and then Jimmy comes in with two fucking helicopters, oh, yeah. and then it's like two helicopters with two cars and fucking grenades going off, oh, and people my God. shooting each other, blowing doors off of shit. It's like Mario Kart. Robin Shu's dropping these grenades. I was thinking of the fucking mouse, <laughs> Mickey Mouse from uh, Marshall Wooden Soldiers when he's oh, in that. Oh yeah, that... it's in the blimp. Yeah, in the blimp. Uh, he has impeccable aim, but he can't kill anybody. He's constantly like blowing up holes right yeah. in front of all the cars. Yeah. So when Moon first comes out with those machine guns, she's unloading and she's being a badass, but then she gets shot in the leg. So then John, he's kind of circling around, circling around. He picks her up, and now they're kind of waiting for uh, Co to come back around the bend while him and Robin Shu are playing grenade, ca- ca- hot grenade <laughs> hot or potato. something. Yeah, hot potato <laughs> with grenades. And they're revving the, the fucking vehicle, and they got the guns ready. So now you have Robin Shu and Co going at it yeah, in yeah. the cars while Jimmy's in hot pursuit up above, shooting him with a fucking- Oh, he's got an assault rifle, Like an yeah. AR-13 and a AR-60, AR whatever the fuck it's called. Oh, yeah, I have enough. Then- Moon and John come driving straight at them, and Moon's hanging out the fucking window with a machine gun, and she's just shooting the shit out of uh, out of Ko and Robin Shu. Yeah, doesn't kill Ko. He does take a couple squibs, and yeah. then he kind of like tries to like, I don't know, like power through it or something. Doesn't work. I don't know. I think, and then I think Robin Shu like throws a grenade, and Ko goes off the fucking cliff, and this thing explodes. Oh, this car yeah. explodes. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, in Groundhog's Day where it's like, yeah, it'll was, probably be okay. I was about to say that Groundhog's Day. Maybe it won't be okay. 
so Robin Shu's driving in his car and he grabs this fucking rocket launcher and he shoots at one of the fucking helicopters and it just explodes. Right. Oh God, the rocket launcher. I forgot about that. So fucking cool. And while he got that from Peter Jackson. <laughs> so Jimmy's chasing Jason Robin Shu around in his car. Uh John's like, we did it, Moon. Uh, Co's dead. And meanwhile, coming back like fucking Jason Voorhees, Co comes up the hill and comes right. up behind John and shoots him in the back. Yeah, that was that was the second return. I forgot about that. Yeah. We joked about that earlier when he went in the water. Yeah, and he reappears. Like, this is the this is the this is the uh, the cover shot where Moon's hanging out of the fucking car, like. She gets out and yeah. she just unloads on Co and just fucking lights him up. Kill shot, final kill oh, shot. Oh, dude, just just riddles that man's chest with bullets. Uh, so Jimmy's chasing Robin Shue, and he finally makes him crash and like they like land and they're like, "Give it up, give it up, way!" <laughs> they're shooting around him. He's like dodging bullets. Yeah. Oh! yeah, he's like flipping and jumping uh, yeah. and jiving. And then, yeah, Lee jumps out of the helicopter and comes, like, right up to him, and he basically surrenders, more Fucking or Fucking throws him in the helicopter, punches him, knocks him the fuck out. And then, like, You the... can't do that! <laughs> <laughs> the last scene of this is just John and Jimmy, like, shaking hands. Well, because there was a scene... We didn't talk about it, but there was a scene earlier when he kills the terrorist guy that he want... that Lee wanted alive. They have an argument where it's like, you know, I, I really wanted this done my way. And, like, they have a disagreement on how things should be done. I guess that's kind of them, like, not only did we beat them, but we we could overcome our differences. Well, he, Jimmy also, like, terrorized oh, well, these at the people funeral at and the everything. funeral. Yeah. For, like, their brother just died, and he's like, you fucking did. I know you did it. And so they're like, we're cool, man. I guess that's true, yeah. We're cool, and now we're going to lock up Robin Shu because he's the mastermind douchebag of this whole operation. Sorry your daughter's dead or whatever. Credits. Uh, right, yeah. That got shot point blank in the chest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we putting this, man? Uh, I might have to put this one in the dumpster, but it's definitely like top of the dumpster. Oh, no. I thought it was good, but oh, no. I didn't think it was great by any stretch. Really? Uh, again, I do have that caveat that going into this, I at least in my opinion, I mean, it seems like maybe you disagree, but I just felt like for, for a woman in power movie, I guess maybe I have a higher standard or, or I was just expecting more, I guess I should say rather. And like, yeah, maybe that last half hour, she's bringing it to these fucking bad guys, but I just feel like she was such a background character for most of the film that when she finally stepped into the limelight I just didn't give a shit I was more interested in what Lee was doing uh, and not so much what Moon Lee was doing uh, not to say that it wasn't interesting. Don't get me wrong. Like I still had a good time. I would rewatch this without a doubt. And uh, the transfer uh, of this this uh, movie really actually makes me want to watch it again, just for that, if nothing else. But uh, I don't know. It's just uh, evil ramen shoe that was kind of interesting, and and those car chases especially are, are just worth admission alone. But uh, I don't know. This just didn't uh, circle all the boxes for me that I was looking for it to circle. Uh, again, incredible cinematography too, I guess I'll say, uh, some of those camera angles are just something to really awe at, especially again, those car chases, the way that they, they did this, uh, I don't know if it's quite George Miller, but it's in that ballpark. It's moving close. It's closer to George Miller than it's not, uh, which I think is a compliment. I hope it comes off as a compliment because it's meant to be as one, um, check this one out. Even, even if it didn't have as much Moon Lee as I wanted, it had a lot more ramen shoe than I was expecting and a few other actors that uh, I'm sadly forgetting. Simon Yaw, Yao, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, you know, the main, Detective Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then John, again, why he's John. Way more important character than the IMDb makes it appear. Uh, but again, that just maybe just because this movie is very new to coming over here and just people don't know about it. High level dumpster. I'm not saying you gotta dig it all. It's at the top. It's by the uh, <laughs> the used toilet paper rolls, some apple cores. You don't really gotta move a lot of junk out of the way. It's up there. It's it's covered in that nice sleeve that you were talking about earlier. Uh, I you know I didn't throw it out with the sleeve. I threw it all out together onto the dumpster, and uh, Joe's gonna lovingly grab it. I'm thinking in a second. <laughs> So I'm going to counter what you said about the women empowerment uh, for for Women's History Month this month. And while this isn't a women a woman centric movie, mm. I chose it. Maybe that's um that's my fault. I chose it because uh it was a newer release, and it's a good it's just a good crazy movie that I wanted to cover. Um, and by the folks at Error four 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 four, and Moonlee is in it. 
I understand okay. the reasoning is 100%. Oh, I know, I know. I just uh, wanted to clarify why maybe I wasn't as hot on it. Oh, okay. Like some some right. preconceived notions maybe have affected my my viewing experience. Okay, because I did, I want to, so Moonly for me in choosing this was the sure. highlight person to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for the month um, and some of her other films that she's done and her her history in the genre and, and the films that she's been a part of. Overall, so, so to this movie, yes. uh, this is on the fucking shelf and I'm so glad that I got a chance to finally see this. Now, this is what I was talking about at the beginning. Um, Chinese cinema um, and Hong Kong cinema specifically is, um, it's a fairly new venture for me. Oh, just, yeah, you were saying that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I haven't seen a ton of it and it's very exciting uh, to get these movies that are not only uh, quote unquote lost or hard to find or maybe have never been released you know, in the U.S. before, uh, finally getting to put them into my fucking eyeballs because <laughs> right, um, yeah, yeah. I'm always on the hunt for stuff that I haven't seen that's really good, and this is one of those cases. And again, like I said, Error 4444 is doing an awesome job with bringing stuff that, um, you know, folks in the U.S. might have not seen, and maybe this was bootlegged, or maybe it did come out on a DVD or a VHS that I just never got a, my hands on or never talked about with f movie fans or Hong Kong movie fans. Um, this fucking movie is incredible. It is an awesome, awesome 90s action epic. Um, it's a great drama too. Like it's a really good uh, cop drama and they're, the fucking stunts in it are insane. And I know that there are other films that are might be just as good or better like uh, Police Story and of course Jackie Chan's other movies and stuff like that. But um, this has an exploitation element mm. that I really appreciate. It it's does. fucking gritty. It's it, again, it's that neo noir thing. It's uh, it's fucking ruthless. It is. It's fucking ruthless. And this, and again, some the craziest, one of the most insane stunts ever put to film is in it. Um, really good acting. Really good story. Um, it's shot really well, but. The real big takeaways for me are Robin Shu being the bad guy because that's just something I've never seen before. He's great, as and it. he was fucking awesome. And of course, uh, a lot of the stunt work in it is is, is really excellent. Um, I cannot recommend it enough. If you can get your hands on it or you can watch it online anywhere, uh, I highly suggest grabbing the disc if you can. Um, if you can't find it by other means uh but definitely check it out i had a really good time with this <laughs> flick um and so you don't want to pass this up no recommending it just yeah. maybe not exactly what i was looking for but absolutely check this one out sure but yeah, if you want some more Movie Dumpster content, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster. You can get an ad-free audio version of the show for only $2 a month. And we also have some other great stuff at the $5 and $10 tiers, including mini-sodes, commentary tracks, live watch-alongs, and all kinds of other goodies you can get and help support your favorite show. That's right. And if you're watching the show here on YouTube, please leave a like and subscribe and uh, share the video with your friends. It really does help. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, Leave us that five stars and possibly a review. Gets us out of the bottom of the dumpster into more eardrums, eyeballs, and everything in between. And we want to grow this dumpster community, get some more folks in here, and check out the show. So uh, spread the uh, good word. Absolutely. And if you want to keep up with what the Dumpster Boys are doing, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on your favorite social media platforms. Or you can go to MovieDumpsterPodcast.com and you can get the lowdown on what we're doing. You can, there's a store on there and whatever events we're going to be at. We're going to be at Monster Mania in Cherry Hill, New Jersey on March 8th through the 10th. And then in April, we're going to be at Tapes from the Crypt at Philomoca in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on 420 for a showing of heavyweights with a live Q&A afterwards with Sean Watt. So get your tickets now. You're definitely not going to want to miss those shows. And also, we're up for a Rondo Award for the best pot. We're a nominee for best podcast. Do us a favor and go cast that vote at RondoAward.com. Uh, deadline is April 16th, so get those in. Yep, we've got a lot of stuff coming up, and we hope to see you all there. So that's it. That's Fatal Termination from 1990, directed by Yen Wakam. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. <laughs>